What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today is gonna be part four of the how-to series and I'm gonna talk about how to create tension in your swing, throw further, throw with less effort and just throw better shots in general. So let's get right into it. Now, in order to throw with good form and just look effortless and feel effortless while throwing, we do have to create some sort of tension here, but not in an active way. And I haven't seen a video about this yet, although I have to admit I don't really watch a lot of form videos, so there might already be something out there talking about exactly this. But what I'm talking about is hip shoulder separation and how to achieve that and build some good tension so that your shots feel easy, look easy and they fly further. So I've talked about hip shoulder separation quite a bit. It's the key for power and accuracy. So yeah, you've probably heard me say this already, but here's a quick summary. For disc golf, when we talk about hip shoulder separation, usually what I'm saying is your hips do the work before your shoulders follow. So you're in your reach back position and from here your hips are already turning towards the target then your shoulders follow and then obviously your arm and your disc are going to follow there as well and in order to do that you have to set yourself up the right way and this time it's not going to be about setting yourself up with footwork but it's going to be about setting yourself up with hips and shoulders themselves so obviously this is kind of connected to footwork, but I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail about especially the hips and the shoulders and their relation to each other. So I'm gonna try to keep this super short, super simple. What we want to do is, once we are in this reach back position with our shoulders nice and open, we wanna get our hips kind of against that, working against it. So while our shoulders are facing back, our hips are kind of facing the front. It's okay to be a little bit open towards here, but mainly the front. Now, the reason we want to do this is because when our shoulders are facing back, nice and open, and our hips are already kind of loading, we can already, and you can actually try this for yourself, when you get into a position like this, you can already feel the tension in your abs and your entire core. So there's already kind of a tension going through here. And once you're here, all you have to do is get the right hip back and you're instantly going to feel that power and you're going to get the maximum out of your reach back. So we want to be here, there's already tension and all we have to do from here is get the right hip back. So that tension of the shoulders being back, the hips being to the front, that should already be there before you even start your swing. So if your right foot is on the ground, let's say you came from a run-up position, right foot hits the ground, you already want to feel that tension. And another guy that does this probably better than anybody in disc golf history is, in my opinion, the greatest backhand player ever, Paul McBeth. When you look at a slow-mo of him, for example, you can really see how everything just kind of naturally loads up, but it doesn't seem forced, and that's exactly what we want. So the goal for us is that after our run-up, we are in a position where our Shoulders are totally open, about 90 degrees seems to be the way to go. I don't really like to think in degrees, but it just is the way it is. Where we have a nice and long reach back, our hips are already loaded. And from here, everything works nice and easy. Let's see how that should look. Nice and effortless, I'm really trying to get my shoulders back and get that tension by twisting my hip against that. I think I just broke my disc by throwing it against this thing. So I hope that shot looked as effortless as it felt, but I hit my line perfectly. I didn't even try to create tension, but by kind of winding up here, twisting my shoulders against my hips, I made it very easy for me to get my hips working and to hit a good shot. Now, as always, to the common mistakes and things you should look for. It's so cold out here, it's crazy. So that mistake is 
A lot of people get into their position here, no matter if it's from a standstill or run-up position, and their shoulders are nice and open towards the back, good reach back position, but instead of their hips facing this way and already being kind of loaded, they are totally open as well. So shoulders and hips are facing the same way for these people. And if you remember what I said about hip-shoulder separation, then you can already imagine how that gets very hard because in order to get good hip and shoulder separation and create that really effortless and smooth swing where you can get power out of visually nothing, you have to get your hips working or rotating towards the target before your shoulders. And if everything is super open, so shoulders open, hips open, that would mean we would still have to get our hips facing this way before our shoulders do. And if you look at it, that's going to be super difficult because I would have to be here, open, open. And from here, nothing here would be allowed to move. And I would have to get my hips turning, 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 while this all stays in place. Because if I turned my hips and my shoulders at the same time here, I'm going to have no separation. Everything is going to turn at the same time. And obviously, if your hips and shoulders are already at the same angle at the beginning, then it gets very hard to all of a sudden get your hips to the front while your shoulders are still back. Now, it can work if you have really good timing and you actually hit that perfect timing of being super open and staying, staying, staying and getting your hips to rotate. But it's not really going to be that effortless because you have to cover a lot of angle, a lot of rotation with your hips. You have to go from all the way back to all the way here, which is super hard to do. So definitely look out for that. We do not want to open up our shoulders and our hips the same way because we do not want our shoulders and our hips to turn at the same time. We want our hips to come first. Now, with that being said, there is one thing that I need to point out because otherwise I know a lot of people would be making a very crucial mistake and here's what that is. So some people, when I tell them exactly what I just told you, where I tell them, open up your shoulders, but keep the tension here by keeping your hips a little bit more to the front. What they start doing is, in their run-up, they get their hips kind of facing like this, which is totally fine. And then, in order to get their hips to not go here, they already start to kind of rotate before their front foot hits the ground. So instead of going reach back, hit or plant with the hips facing this way and then rotating. What they do is they reach back and while they do that, they already start rotating here. So instead of reach back, plant, hips facing this way, shoulders facing this way, and then work from here, what they do is they reach back and in order to keep that tension, they already rotate into their step. So always make sure that you plant first and then you rotate. That is correct timing. So reach back when our foot hits the ground here. We want to keep our hips like this. There's no rotating going on or nothing. And then once our foot hits here, there's this good tension and from here we can throw a good shot. So that is something I really want you to focus on if you work on this is that you don't start to rotate your hips early. I want you to build up tension, I want you to twist your shoulders against your hips, but I do not want you to start rotating your hips like this before you hit the ground. Plant first, then rotate. Or rather, build up tension, then plant, then rotate, brace, whatever you want to call it. So, that's the order, make sure you do that. Otherwise, you're gonna probably mess up your form. So now I'm gonna throw one or two shots. Really make sure I focus on that. I'm gonna show it to you first in full speed and then in slow-mo. Now, as always, when I talk about form, my personal opinion is work with the feeling rather than kind of like the specific angles. So this shot now, I'm really gonna try to feel that tension form when I get into a position where I'm twisting everything against each other and then just releasing that tension. So it's all gonna be about building up tension and then just letting my body kind of 
go where it wants to go with that loaded up tension. So here we go. So that's already kind of it. I tried to keep this as short as I possibly could to make sure that it is simple to understand. I hope it was easy to understand. If not, please feel free to drop a comment. And as always, if you like the video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Big shout out to Disc Golf For You, Austrian disc golf shop who makes this, these videos possible. Big shout out to Moby Disc Golfing for giving me awesome clothes that keep me warm even in this kind of terrible weather. And of course, Latitude 64 for making great discs. And as always, please follow me on Instagram at leonsonleitner underline DG. Helps me out a lot as well. I will put the link in the bio to my Instagram. So thank you. See you next time.